Great. Uh, could you indicate if you're seeing the uh, report, it begins executive summary. There are sentences in red and sentences in black. Uh, could you please indicate if, you, if you're seeing the report? Right. Thanks, uh, Ramona. And thanks, uh, Bridget. So what we will do is identify what was good and what was not so good. And it's the same set of errors that everyone, everyone has been making. I, pro I probably corrected every single executive summary because it's the same set of errors. Um, so let's go through this report and identify the common set of mistakes that people are making and why. So as you know, in your executive summary, it is expected that you should make three statements or three sets of statements. And the first is uh, a statement that, the first is a statement that establishes the importance of the issue. The second is the purpose of the report. And the third is the scope of the report. So let's, let's proceed as follows. Mariel says, multinational corporations have made significant contributions to the rapid globalization. She spelled it with an S, please note that observed in today's global dynamic business environment. And I added, however, it can be argued that multinationals create detrimental consequences as well. So students, what we have here now is a, a sentence that establishes the issue that multinationals not only make contributions, but they have detrimental ones as well. Your opening sentence or, or sentences should establish this debate that some sentence that show, shows there's a positive dimension to MNCs as well as a negative one. The next part of your executive summary should be the purpose of this report. Mariel says, this case study will evaluate the sentence. It is believed that multinationals are always detrimental to their host countries. Consideration will be first given to the process and history of globalization in relation to MNCs, I added here, including a brief discussion on the evolution of MNCs. Following this, a case study, which would encompass an analysis of Volkswagen and a comparative, I included this word comparative, impact on the activities of the US and Brazil. To conclude, emerging issues and policy implications will be identified along with recommendations. And I added here the scope. The discussion will be limited to one MNC and two countries. This will be a very good executive summary. And um, one of the main problems, in fact, there are two problems. Students are not including the scope and students are not giving a clear statement on the purpose of the report. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this and share the official brief so you understand how to write the purpose of the report. Okay, students, are you seeing the uh, assignment brief on your screen? Please uh, indicate, are you seeing the assignment brief? Just let me know. Thanks, Bridget, okay. So students, this is, uh, this is how you have to write your executive summary. You are to read the exact instructions. These are the instructions, these are the instructions. These are your instructions. Briefly discuss the process of globalization, how it has influenced the world economy since the 70s. Discuss the establishment of modern MNCs and the part they play in the globalization process. Students, all of this has to be reworded and it must go into your executive summary in future tense. All of this, you are to present a case study of a chosen, nation, of a chosen multinational. This would involve this would involve a balanced discussion on the the impacts, both the positive and the negative, in a balanced argument, 
as well as a comparison on the impacts between the developed and developing. So students, you have to read the exact instructions, reread it several times, rewrite it in future tense in your executive summary. Also in your executive summary, you want to take the exact instructions. That is, the report will also identify policy implications, emerging issues related to host countries and how they have been negatively impacted by the MNCs. Finally, a conclusion and recommendations will be made. I hope that you understand because I've corrected many and I have not seen any single student with a flawless or perfect executive summary because students have not been reading the exact instructions. So please read the exact instructions. All of them are here, right? Uh, even this, rec you, the report will re recommend potential policies to prevent detrimental impacts. All of that is what you want to take and put into your executive summary so it is nice and clear. You do not want to lose marks for simple things like this. All you have to do is read your assignment brief very carefully. There's a lot of precise instructions. You will take these instructions and then write them in your executive summary. Does everyone understand? If you understand how to write your executive summary, please indicate now if you understand because um, this is a common error I've been seeing. If you understand, please let me know. Yes, Sheldon, yes, Ramona, yes. Um, Akil, do you understand how to write your executive summary? Kemba, do you understand? Kemba, I had to amend, uh, I amended your work. In fact, I amended everybody's work. Uh, Kemba, Kemba and Akil, do you understand how to write the executive summary now? Marie, Marie, Mariel, Nisa, I, I amended your work as well, Nikisha. Uh, could you could you indicate if it's clearer to you? Could you indicate if it's clearer to you now? How to write your executive summary? You can do so in the chat function. Akil, yes, great. Marielle, yes, Nisa, yes, okay, very good. So we want to have, you want to start, understand that first and last impressions are everything. You want to start when the reader reviews your executive summary, it must be flawless. So you already invoke or evoke, I'm sorry, a positive, a positive response in the mind of the reader. So now that we understand what is the executive summary, I will remove this document and let's go back to Marielle's, Marielle's work. Great if you're seeing Mariel's work as your new screen, just somebody please indicate yes so I could continue. Just confirm that you're seeing executive summary in red and black. Nice, thanks Ramona. Okay, let's move on to the next section of, um, of, your, of your report. We have concluded the executive summary. Let's move on to the next section and this is globalization and multinationals. So let's read and see if, uh, see if Mariel has what is required. These two authors define globalization as the interlinkage
define globalization as the interlinkage of international economic structures through cross-border transactions, which adds to the facilitation of increased domestic revenue through the creation of international division of labor, in which there's an interdependence between countries encouraging diverse economic integration. So um, this is the, the, the definition of globalization. This is fine. Mariel, I'll probably, um, the sentence is a bit, a, a bit cumbersome to read it so lengthy. Maybe you could probably split it in two or something like that. So Mariel has a clear definition for globalization. These authors, Mariel, this is a little, this is a little grammar. Um, multiple authors would be a plural verb. So the plural verb will be add, not adds. So like how you have two authors, plural verb, multiple authors, plural verb. So it should be mere et al ad, that this concept is multidimensional and includes social, economic, technological, political, and cultural facets, in addition to it being a continuous process whose intensity changes over time and so on. So I like this paragraph for two reasons. Firstly, she clearly defines what globalization is, and she says that there are different dimensions or forms of globalization, including social, economic, technological, political, and cultural. That was good. Let's move on to the next paragraph. The contemporary stage of globalization, and I like this because she's saying contemporary me meaning modern or current stages of globalization began in the 1970s. So she's actually saying here that there's a new phase and she's implying that there was a older era. So the contemporary stage began in the 70s and was influenced by technology, which aided, which was aided, which aided the ease of global communication and transportation. In addition to macroeconomic regulation, disintegration previously established under the Bretton Woods system in 1944. Globalization has expectedly impacted the, gl the global economy in varying ways. Akram et al. identifies that the impacted areas include but are not limited to global markets, changes in countries, foreign direct investment, in addition to standards of living and world trade. So what I like about this paragraph is she's following instructions. The instructions are not only to define and give the process and drivers of globalization, but a brief history. That is what the assignment brief said, a brief history and so. So she've done, she's done all of that well, um, very succinctly. It is not, they are not lengthy paragraphs, six lines, six lines, and so on. She's going to introduce multinational corporations, their history and impact of globalization. So uh, I would say she's hit the nail on the head here because this is what you have to discuss, the history evolution, and how they have impacted globalization. So let's read. The term multinational corporation describes an organization which integrates and controls business activities in international markets through FBI with the intention of adding value to the firm and arguably by extension, foreign economies. So she has a nice definition of MNCs. These organizational structures are, are significant. I think, Mariel, this would should be contributors, are significant contributors to the global economy by facilitating the movement of capital, human resources, and products. The modern growth of MNCs is relative to that of the concept of globalization and can be contributed to the post-World War II era, headed by the industrial na industrialized nations. There are many contributing factors which have enabled MNC establishment within the global economy, including communication and transportation developments, changes in political policies, incentives which enhance the attraction of their domestic business environment for investment, to prospective investment organizations. This has led to a steady growth of the number of MNCs that have been established from 7,000 in the 60s to over 80,000 
by 2006 and subsidiary counts exceeding 300,000. Okay, uh, let's evaluate this part, these two paragraphs. Mariel has done well. She defined what MNCs are. She gave a history of them. They, they were a small number this period. They grew substantially over this period. And Mariel is supposed to discuss the impact of globalization. I listened to the conference from your module leader and she stated that you should discuss that globalization and MNCs are interdependent. This is important, meaning you have to say how you have to say how how MNCs have accelerated globalization and how globalization has all also led to the establishment of MNCs. Now, when I read these two paragraphs, I think Mariel has done that. Mariel has said here that um, Mariel has said that MNCs are contributors to the global global economy and to globalization by movement of capital, human resources, and products. Basically, what she is saying is MNCs have led to, they have encouraged the process of globalization because of the movement of people, money, and products. She's also saying here that, she's also saying here, that, that um, the global economy, including information and communication advancements, changing in, changes in government policies, uh, as you know, over the last four decades or so, governments have, have lowered their protectionist barriers. So she's also saying that globalization itself has increased or has led to the growth of MNCs. So all Mariel needed to do here is to include the sentence that, say, that says, MNCs and globalization are interdependent and make it clearer that each drive the other, each drives the other. That is, MNCs drive the globalization process through dispersion of production, through standardized products, through the movement of people, products, and capital. And that globalization drives the process of MNCs and that MNCs would not exist. MNCs would cease to exist if there were no globalization. Globalization through reduction of protectionist barriers governments being more receptive to trade. If governments were not receptive to trade, there would be no MNCs. So students, another common error that I've seen is that students have not discussed this sentence that MNCs and globalization are interdependent. You need to make the statement clear and explain how each contributes to the other, how MNCs contribute to globalization and how without globalization, there'll be no MNCs. That is a second recurring mistake that I have seen everywhere in all of the assignments I've corrected in the last week. If you understand this statement, interdependence, and you understand how to correct your work, please indicate now before I move on. In your chat, if you understand what is interdependence between globalization and MNCs, Please indicate now so I can move on. Mariel, good. So Mariel says she understands. Um, Sheldon, yes, you understand. Okay, great. Kemba, yes, you understand. Wonderful. All right. So we are continuing, and the purpose of this class is to identify common errors. I have documented a page of common mistakes and what we are doing is going through Mariel's work to show these common errors and how to how to overcome them. So Mariel did in fact discuss the interdependence, but it would have been clearer if she had made the statement that globalization and MNCs are interdependent and they cannot exist without the other. Something of that nature and then you would explain. Let's continue with our discussion. So the third section of this assignment, 3.0, is a case study on your chosen company and its impact on two countries. Mariel's company is Volkswagen and 
or chosen countries are the US, one developed and one developing. Students, I received an assignment this week and the student discussed Brazil and I think it was Chile, Brazil and Chile. What is wrong? What is wrong with those um, with choosing those two countries? That is what the student discussed, Brazil and Chile. Uh, what is wrong with choosing those two countries? Brazil and Chile. Anybody? What is wrong? And why that person probably barely pass if they were lucky? What is wrong with choosing Brazil and Chile? Very good, Kemba. They are both developing. Very good, Mariel. They are both developing. Very good, Sheldon. Akil, they are both developing. And I, it really perplexes me. I have been discussing this at length, and I provide really detailed guidance orally and writing in person. And I don't know why someone would do that. So I had to write back and say, scrap this and start over. Um, now, the person had chosen BHP Billiton. BHP Billiton is from which country? It's an energy company. Does anybody know their country of origin? Could, could you indicate their country of origin for BHP Billiton? They are, they are here in Trinidad. We are their host. But the country of origin, where? Does anybody know BHP? Billiton, their country of origin. Okay, if you don't, BHP is an Australian company. So the company comes from Australia. Now, the same assignment in which the person discussed Brazil and Chile, and I told them, no scrap one. You must have one developed and one developing. That person later decided that they would use Australia as their developed country. Students, what is wrong with using Australia? Why could you never use Australia? And if you use that, you would, that person would probably fail. Why? Why can you not use Australia in your report, in that person's report? That person chose BHP. What's the problem with that? Yes, Sheldon, that's the home country. Christina, that's the, home, that's the home country. It's not host. Akil, it's not host. So students, you see, uh, I mean, I don't, know, I, I don't know what else to do or to say to correct these kind of simplistic and elementary mistakes. These are not even mistakes pertaining to the assignment itself. I mean, uh, students, you really have to be careful. If I were correcting that assignment, I would feel it because you are not following basic instructions. You are not to discuss home. You are not to discuss two developing countries, etc. All right. So just some um, words of, of wisdom. So let's continue with the section here, the Volkswagen group. And we expect a paragraph of information. And what do you expect to find? The home country, the country of origin, years of experience, their main product areas, their main competitors, their main customer segments their business strategy, and their asset base. So let's read this paragraph. This is what I expect to find. So we begin. Volkswagen was established in 34. Their headquarters is in Germany. Volkswagen is, its main sector is the automobile industry. They have an employee base of almost three quarter million. The organization's focus was on research and development. Originally, they produced military vehicles and artillery to supply the German government during World War II. Vehicular production switched to public consumption in the 50s. Uh, they have both aggressive shares of local and international markets through globalization and advancements and digitization and e-mobility solutions they have been able to expand into international markets. Volkswagen operates in 124 countries. 120, they have 124 plants in 31 countries across continents such as Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. The, com the group currently has 12 different brands, so most of which are positioned for consumers, including economy cars as well as luxury cars. They have the second largest share of manufacturers. Uh, they are the second largest manufacturer of the automobiles in the world, which is true, I think. General Motors, an American company, is the largest. 
and they have an asset base of just lower below half 500 billion euros this was very good the only thing that was missing here is mariel did not say their business strategy michael porter would argue that they use a differentiation strategy etc so mariel you have every possible thing in this paragraph it's very precise the only thing i would add here is maybe four or five words on their business strategy so this was very very good please be sure also to name a few of the continents and the countries do not just say they operate in 31 countries, list a few of them. So Mariel has listed some of the continents here, which is really good. Okay, so this is the impact on two countries. She will begin with a discussion on the US, which is a developed country. The United States of America is considered a developed country as it possesses an economy, which is sophisticated and mature. Economic development is measured by GDP, the US GDP stood at 20 trillion in 2018, with consideration given to sophistication of technological in infrastructure and a varied service and industrial sector. Now, you see, all of this is a brief overview of the US, but Mariel never really said why the US was chosen in relation, this is my, this is the important part, in relation to Volkswagen. Mariel indicated earlier that Volkswagen has 31 countries, but she didn't precisely say why she chose the US relative to any of the other 31 countries. Students, what she was supposed to say something to this effect, that whether the US was Volkswagen's largest market, was it the country's oldest market? Was it the country's newest market? Was it the company's, I'm sorry, most competitive market? Was it the company's most profitable market? Was it the country, was it the company's market for the greatest potential? So while Mariel, why Ma while Mariel gave a little overview about the US, she didn't discuss the US in relation to Volkswagen. So this could remain, you know, but you would need a sentence that says, the US was chosen for discussion because, for any one of the reasons, is it the largest market for Volkswagen? The oldest market, it has been there since time immemorial. It's the newest and most recent market. It's the most profitable market. It's the market with the most amount of potential for Volkswagen, etc. Does everybody understand what you are expected to say when you give the reason for why this country was chosen. If you understand, this is another common mistake. The purpose of this class is to discuss the common mistakes. Almost everyone has made this mistake. If you understand how to choose or the reasoning for choosing a country, please indicate now in your chat so I could move on. Kemba, yes. There are 15 people in this chat. Please indicate if you understand the reasoning for choosing a country. Christina, yes. Achille, yes. Marielle, yes. Tasha, yes. Ramona, yes. Excellent. Sheldon, Rihanna, yes. So please, this is how to, this is your justification, right? Let's continue with this with the, the discussion here. Um, Volkswagen has positively affect, impacted this country. Also, Mariel, I'm just realizing you didn't define what is a developed country. I guess you imply it. You say the U.S. is developed since it possesses. So I guess this could stay because um, it's implied, Mariel, you are implying that a developed country is one which is mature, one which has a high GDP, and one which has a sophisticated technological base varied with service and industrial sector. So um, this could remain Mariel as a definition for a developed country. Let's continue. Volkswagen has impacted this country through the creation of American jobs with the establishment of their manufacturing plant in Tennessee as part of an aggressive international growth strategy. This is fine, but I would recommend that you define job creation. Remember, Another problem that I have encountered is that almost all of the assignments I've read 
read like um, stories in the Gazette. It reads like a newspaper story. This is not a newspaper story. This is an academic assignment, which means that there must be academic information. There must be theoretical discussion. There must be definitions. There must be, you must define economic concepts. You must give theories related to these economic concepts. And everybody has been making that same mistake. It sounds too much like a story in the Gazette. There's not enough academic and there's not enough economic discussion so yes mariel please define what is job creation let's continue mariel is saying here mariel is saying here that um volkswagen hired four thousand direct workers um about 20 percent of citizens from tennessee and are employed by german organizations etc all of this is fine, but what is the outcome and impact of this on Tennessee? How did it benefit Tennessee and the people of Tennessee? They got jobs, but what was the outcome? And the outcome, Mariel, you would have to say is that their standard of living improved. Their consumers, their level of consumer spending increased. They were able to have a better quality life. How did it affect the U.S.? The GDP of the U.S. would have increased, etc. So. This is another opportunity to introduce more theoretical concepts. There's a framework called the Human Development Index, and the Human Development Index measures the wellness of people, the quality of life that they enjoy. So Mariel, you could have said, as a result of these 400 jobs that they created, the quality of life increased, and you could have, this could have been the opportunity to discuss the Human Development Index. The Human Development Index was first introduced by, I think it's a Pakistani. If not Pakistani, he's definitely Islamic. His name is Mabul, Mabul Ulhaq. And he came up with the HDI. It's a very, very, very respected index that measures wellness, people's lives, the richness and the quality of living. So Mariel has another opportunity to introduce here uh, economic concept called the HDI. You could have also tied it more to the U to the US by using the uh, the cough index. The cough index measures the percentage of export sales in GDP. So Mariel granted your point is about job creation, etc. But you could have extended this to say that um, their presence in the US has led to increase in export sales from the US, which has increased the uh, amount of exports as a percentage of GDP, which is measured by the COF index. You could have defined what the COF index was, gave a before and after in the, uh, value for the COF index, meaning before the Germans and Volkswagen entered the US, what was the COF index? After they entered the US, what was the COF index? So students, I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to do. So far, all of this sounds like a story. I'm trying to add academic substance to the report. So there's a there's an academic dimension to it. Students, before I move on, this is another common error that, that the entire class has made. The report sounds too much like a story with not enough academic material. If you understand what I mean by academic, by having an academic and economic discussion, please indicate in your chat so I could move on. Very, very important points. I'm trying to train you to score 80. We want everybody to score 80. In assignment one, half of the class had a high mark and we want to reproduce that performance. If you understand what I mean by integrating more academic work, please indicate. Right, from Kemba, yes, Ramona, Nisa, Christina, yes, wonderful. Let's continue with our discussion. Let's continue again. US job creation is not only limited to Volkswagen, it, it's its rival. Um, many, many other rival companies from, from South Korea, such as Kia, from Japan, such as Toyota, have already contributed to a reduction in unemployment. This is a really good point. 
because another mistake that students are making is they're not having comparisons with rival companies who did something similar. So yes, Marielle's having a case study on Volkswagen, but she's comparing it with others in the sector, Kia, Toyota, who have also created jobs in Tennessee to the amount in the amount of 2,500, later exceeding 100,000 persons in this sector. So this was really good material. Maria is making a comparison. Those of you who have not had comparisons, I always remember two semesters ago, not last semester, this semester before that, the module leader, Diane, had a conference and she said that very openly, if you want to score higher marks, you will have comparisons with other com companies in your country or with other companies in other countries. So please remember to correct Please remember to do that as far as possible. Uh, let's continue with Mario's discussion. So, so far, Mario has made one point, which is job creation. Another point is investment of capital. Additionally, Volkswagen has invested a significant amount of capital into the US economy by establishing the Tennessee plant which amounted to 80 million US dollars. And I really like the fact that Mariel has a number. This is another problem I'm seeing. Many of the students, yes, they give their points, but they don't have data. We want numbers. And I will show you how to use numbers. So she said they invested 80 million by in their manufacturing activities, including the construction of a newly developed electric vehicle. Another opportunity to define what is, um, to, to include more theoretical concepts is, Marielle, define what is FBI, or define what is inward capital or capital investment. The current US government has used its persuasive power to encourage large amounts of FBI. So you see a good a definition of FBI would have been very useful here from MNCs in the manufacturing sector by agreeing to hold the imposition of hefty tariffs. Which country is this? Donald Trump did that? Okay. Um, in lieu of capital injections, a, a by result of the discussed impact is the aforementioned job creation. So Mario, what was the outcome of this? How did it benefit the US and the people? You're talking about substantial amounts of FBI. You know how this would have benefited the US? The capital account on the balance of payment. So Mario, another opportunity to integrate economic theory. The balance of payment is a financial record that governments keep. You know how to define it. It is comprised of three areas, the visibles, the invisibles, and the capital account. You know what this 80 million would have done for the US? Their capital account would have increased and their balance of payments would have increased. It would have made the US a more attractive destination for other MNCs in the rest of the world because their capital account would have reflected a positive resulting from this 80 million injection of FBI. Do you understand what I'm doing class? I'm taking Mario's exact information, but I am integrating it with the theory that you expected to discuss. Theory on FBI, theory on the balance of payments, theory on the capital account. Previously, I spoke about the COF index. I spoke about the human development index. So mark this exact assignment to be rich in academic discussion. Let's move on to the, um, the negative discussion. However, Volkswagen's contributions have not always been, have not always been um, positive. Students, you have to excuse me for just one second. I have a dog with me and he is about to bark because he wants to go outside to just Excuse me for five seconds.
Okay, my apologies for that. We are moving on to negative impacts on the US. Mariel argues that Volkswagen's contributions have not always been positive. In 2016, diesel, a diesel emission, emission scandal. Um, I'm not sure if you remember, this was, this was widely, widely discussed around the world. Um, Volkswagen was accused of um, falsifying their emission levels and it was discovered that the company had understated its emission levels from its vehicles. So I, I think this is the point she's making. Diesel emissions, there's a diesel emission scandal in which environmental exploit in which there was environmental exploitation. So here, Mariel, a good opportunity to say what is environmental degradation or environmental exploitation, get a nice modern definition from the UN or something like that through depletion of the ozone layer. And not only that, Mariel, they, it was um, it was breach. Um, one, could, one could argue a legal breach because they falsified in many countries, they understated the level of carbon monoxide coming out from their vehicles. Right, so this resulted in the organization's attempt to amass superior market share over their competitors in the realm of development and manufacturing of environmentally friendly automobiles in which they opted to produce diesel vehicles instead of hybrid vehicles. Okay, so Mariel, yes, um, you, discussed, you discussed the negative impact, but it could have been discussed more fully by trying to have um, a dollar value on the environmental loss. Now, this may be difficult to try and quantify the level of environmental destruction, but but you may not be able to actually find the exact figure in terms of environmental loss that, that Volkswagen did. But if you research, maybe you could find something comparable, meaning if any researcher has done, uh, has written any article in which they said that companies that have high levels of exhaust, any kind of automobile company that have high levels of exhaust, destroying the environment, and if they estimate a figure, then you could use that in your report. You could say um, estimates of environmental destruction from automobile manufacturers have been stated in the amount of X, Y, and Z. So I, I think that that is not impossible to find. You may not be able to find the exact amount that Volkswagen destroyed, but you could get something comparable something similar, any other researcher or any other scholar who wrote any article in which they attempted to quantify the value in, of environmental loss caused by vehicle emissions. Now, if you had a value, that could be really useful because you had a value, you had a value for the positives, 80 million. And if you could have a value, if you could try and find a value for the negatives, that would be really ideal because now you can quantify, you can see it can be surmised that Volkswagen's business activities have had an overall benefit. Now, what you did, Mariel, you did say, yes, these are the positives. There's 3% annual growth. There was 300 billions in their contribution to the auto sector. Yes, all of that is good. You could even added the 80 billion. And now you could have gone on to say, that the estimated value of environmental destruction was let's say 100 billion. If you had that figure, you can now conclusively say that the positives outweigh the negatives because the positives are over 300 billion plus the 80 million or whatever have you, and the environmental destruction is only 100 billion. So clearly the positive dollar value exceeds the negative dollar value. So students always try to quantify. Um, I am seeing some people contributing in the chat. Mariel, yes, you'll try to get the data. So students, before I move on, if you understand what I mean by quantify the dollar value for the positive and the dollar value for the negative, because in the end, it will help you to discuss the net effect the overall effect being more positive or more negative. Students, if you understand what I'm saying by quantifying the dollar value 
positive and dollar value negative, please indicate so we can move on. I'm trying to have you to help you have strong answers. We want everybody to score in the 80s. Christina, yes, you understand. Ramona, yes. Rihanna, yes. Try to quantify positive, quantifying negative. These are the uh, is a common set of mistakes. Kemba, good, excellent. Let's move on now. I'm going to um continue. Mariel. Impact on Brazil. So Mariel did really good here. She discussed the positives. All of this is the uh, all of this was positive job creation, uh, FDI. I try to strengthen up the assignment by using more economic concepts, principles, and theories. Then she discussed the negatives, and then she had a paragraph discussing the net, the overall benefit. So that was really good. Let's move on to its impact on Brazil. A developed and develop. You mean developing? This is an error. So it should be a developing country, Maria, a little error here. A developing country is one in which the per capita income is less than 2,700 and so on. Their infrastructure and technological landscape is less developed and their external financial linkages are not as emergent in comparison to global economies. An excellent definition, I like it. One such nation is Brazil. Um, Volkswagen has been in Brazil since the 50s and it's the assembly plan for their Beetle. All of this is fine, but Maria didn't say why Brazil was chosen. You, know, you could say, I'm seeing here that they have been operating since the 50s. So that's almost five decades. So you can say Volkswagen, Brazil was chosen for discussion because Volkswagen has a history in that country with a presence of over five decades and is therefore considered to be one of the country, one of the company's oldest market. And as a result has been selected for discussion. Mariel, if you understand, please indicate what you expected to see. Good, yes, Maria, do you understand? Um, understood. Also the other members of the class, do you understand how, what you expected to see? So Mariel, Mariel has a sentence here and I'm, I'm taking this information and creating a justification. The justification is, is after at this point by the red flashlight here, the pointer, you should see that uh, Brazil was chosen for discussion because Volkswagen has a history, a long-term presence in Brazil with over 50 years of operation in this, uh, this country, making, making Brazil one of its oldest markets. And for these reasons, Brazil was selected for discussion. So that is what you have to say there, Mariel. Please, everyone, um, there are only 16 participants. I, I really hope that those who are not here, here, uh, they could listen to the recording. And apart from the recording, I'm going to send out these common mistakes to Jude. And I really hope that everyone reads it. If you read my guidance, it has everything. Nobody should score below 80 if you follow the instructions and especially today's conference. Let's read Mariel's work now on Brazil. I, so Mariel's first point is a positive point of direct investment. And I ask her to discuss the Harold Duma model. Volkswagen has a growth strategy involving foreign direct investment. In 2018, the organization embarked on several projects which required large investment contributions, including over 300 million US to upgrade a facility in Brazil. The outcome of this is that there was a 13% increase in operating profit for the organization's trunk and bus division. Now, now, Mariel, we are not concerned. We are not concerned with the outcome on the com company, you know. We are not concerned whether they were in a more profitable position or less profitable position. That's not the purpose of this assignment. The purpose of this assignment is to discuss the outcome on the country and the outcome on the people, not the outcome on the company. 
So I've been seeing this in the entire last week. Everybody is talking about their company, how their company grew and flourished and benefited and profited, etc. But that is inconsequential. You are moving away from the, the purpose of this assignment. So you have to be careful. The purpose of this assignment is to discuss the impact and the outcome on the country. So Mariel, if you said they spent 340 million, they had all these projects. What was the outcome on Brazil? You see, I have that there. What was the outcome on Brazil? Did it allow, did it enable the government to have more money? And as a result, the government was able to use this money to spend in other areas like healthcare and infrastructure. Did the people benefit from a higher standard of living? Did their spending and quality of life improve? Did it increase the overall GDP for the country, etc.? That is what you're expected to see. Do you understand, students, what I mean by outcome? So it's the outcome on the country and the people, not the outcome on, not the outcome on your company. These investments encourage the host government to offer tax incentives, and it also maximized, and it also maximized by another of Volkswagen's competitors, GM, who recently invested. 2.5 billion. Now this data is good because you're showing comparison. Your point here is FBI and you're saying that Volkswagen is not the only company to invest. Um, GM also invested. What you did not see is the outcome and impact on the country and on the people. Investments like these have allowed for knowledge transfer. Again, define what is knowledge transfer. Um, Volkswagen invested for the purpose of research and development. They have a new plant, which was the first to solely focus to be developed and to be produced by the Brazilian team. The continuity of Volkswagen's investments in Brazil by knowledge transfer can be estimated to 1.5 billion in research and development. Now, I really like this because not only does Marielle make a strong point for knowledge transfer, but she quantified, she, Marielle has a value. She's saying this research and development can be quantified in the amount of 1.5 billion euros. And I like that because later on, we can use this to, to quantify, or not quantify, to, um, to take our position, whether we believe that Volkswagen had a an overall or net benefit or disadvantage in Brazil. Contrastingly, in the 70s, there was a situation in which it was recognized by the home field at Volkswagen, Brazil, displayed signs of human exploitation, again, by, by not having fair wages and by not complying with the government's wage policy, which was detrimental to the employees Again, define human exploitation. What would have been good, good Maria? Now you also say here that other companies like Tesla engage in such a breach. What would be really good is if you found the data for the actual salaries. So you said that they were paid five dollars less. It would be really good if you could say what was the industry standard. So let's say the industry standard in the US was. 20 US dollars an hour, state that, and then state how much they play, how much they pay their employees. If their employees, I'm, in, I'm, I'm gauging here, you say $5 less. So one could estimate that they pay them 15. And you could make a lot of inferences, you know, class. If you don't have the data, all you have to do is go on to, let's say another website, like let's say uh, a standards website in the US, or the US labor standards, any one of those government departments and try to determine what is the wage policy in the US, what is the average wage, and you can deduct, you can deduce that from, from $20, if this is the average wage, Volkswagen and Tesla only paid 15, then we can, we can infer that the salaries were only $15 an hour. From that, we could compute that if Volkswagen only paid $15 an hour, we could compute the estimated loss in income
for the rest for the citizens of the United no this is Brazil for the citizens for Brazil I'm sorry I was talking about the US but my point is it would be really good is if you could quantify the dollar value lost to Brazil yes they paid a lower value but what was the total amount of losses to the Brazilian economy by paying this value research what is the what is the estimated standard of pay or income for a brazilian employee in the auto sector and try to quantify how much losses the economy would have incurred because volkswagen paid a lower salary the point is if you quantify you will now have a value that you could compare against the 1.5 billion so let's see what mariel Mariel's conclusion is, despite the negative impact, the previously discussed factors have led to a significant increase in the manufacture of vehicles in Brazil, with the sector reporting an 8.5 increase in the third quarter and an overall GDP increase of 1.1%. Though there have been significant fluctuations in the GDP, it's imperative to note that the car manufacturing industry has consistently contributed to this figure due to the dynamic developments within the sector. It can be concluded that the presence of Volkswagen in the Brazilian economy has been predominantly beneficial. My comment is, Mariel, you have figures to support the positive, but you don't have the figures for the negative. So all of these are positive figures, yes. All of these are positive figures, but try to compute what was the dollar value loss. Yes, you've stated that they pay $5 lower than what is the what is the uh, established wage policy, but try to compute what is the total dollar value loss. Like, let's say, let me show you how to do that. Brazil, you didn't see how much people they employed. So Mariel, this is what to do. Go back to Brazil, try and find how much Brazilians they employed. I'm, Looking to see if you have that data here. Um, not seeing how much Brazilians they employed. But if you had the data on the amount of Brazilians employed, you could multiply it by the actual wage, then subtract that from the industry standard, and that would enable you to actually quantify the total dollar value loss to the Brazilian economy from paying low wages. And then once you have that figure, you could now compare that negative figure against the, the positive figure, which was, the positive figure was 1.5 euros billion. So now that you could quantify the positive and the negative, you would be in a strong position to see what was the predominant outcome. We have now, we have now concluded the discussion on the US and Brazil. Now, this section here is emerging issues and policy implications that would have ar arisen in the US and in Brazil. So let's read. Now, before I even read, I am expecting that the emerging issues, I am expecting that the emerging issues pertain to human, human exploitation in Brazil. And I'm expecting that the emerging issues pertain to environmental exploitation. Students, you understand that there's a logic meaning that the negative consequences that you discussed in the previous section must be the same issues in your policy implications. And this sounds like common sense, but in some of the other assignments, I have seen students discuss uh, environmental problems in their countries and emerging issues, they are discussing tax reform. So students, that's apples and grapes. The policy implications must be informed by the negative issues. In Mariel's work thus far, there are two negative issues. One is not paying people proper salaries, and the next is environmental destruction. So before I even read, I am expecting that the, negative, the policy implications and the issues relate to people and relate to the environment. Does everybody understand that your emerging issues and policy implications must be related to the negative 
consequences that you discussed in your earlier section. This is important. If you understand this, please indicate in your chat that your policy implications and your emerging issues must directly be connected to the negative consequences on the host countries. Please indicate if you understand this. Good, Christina, yes. Kemba, yes. Akil, yes. Um, Marielle, yes. Wonderful. So now I'm going to read Marielle's section, Marielle section here. One would expect to find a discussion on environmental issues and human issues. And I like Marielle starts, starts here really excellently. She says, based on the previous analysis, you know what this expression means? It means that what Marielle discussed previously, all of the horrible practices of Volkswagen in the previous analysis are now going to inform the policy implications. So Marielle really is showing a logic based on what happened before, we are going to identify emerging issues and policy implications here. So let's see, um, based on previous analysis of business operations of the Volkswagen Group in relation to the US and Brazil, the following issues can be considered for further disaggregation. Firstly, the exploitation of environment. And she is correct because that was something she discussed previously. Resources, namely in intentional depletion of the ozone layer, layer. And it's true because Volkswagen knew that they were lying when they, I don't want to say lying, they had falsified their, their emissions claims. So it was in an, a willful, a willful, um, a willful disclosure. Um, so they made a false, a, a false declaration through misrepresentation. So Maria, you have excellent language. It was intentional and it was a misrepresentation um, of their diesel testing. And that has to be addressed. This situation has implications for the Clean Air Act. So this, Mariel, this is a perfect paragraph. I cannot improve this any further. It was really good. Um, the second issue pertains to environment, to exploitation of persons. Again, it's very correct because it's connected to her previous analysis with respect to unfair remuneration and packages where employees were not adequately compensated not adequately compensated in an attempt to maintain attractive environments for FBI and so on. Um, the structure of these current policies need oversight. In both countries, in both countries, Maria, you, you say the, these policies are overseen by uh, these words here, I don't know what these words mean. Are they acronyms? Marielle, could you indicate, are they acronyms? Are they acronyms? Yes, Marielle, you know, what, would, what you should do, you should, you should spell out these acronyms. Are these regulatory bodies in Brazil? Are these regulatory bodies? I'm imagining. Yes, these are two overseeing bodies in, in Brazil. So Mariel, what you should do is you should actually state the bodies, you know, and you should say overseen by the regulators. Do you add that word? Overseen by the regulators in Brazil, in Brazil, and these two bodies are X, Y, and Z. Good. So Mariel, um, these, so clearly Mariel is saying there's need for ratification, strengthening of policies, both in environmental and labor sectors, right? So this, this section was really good, really, really spot on. I couldn't improve it. Let's move on to your recommendations. So we are, we are going to expect that the recommendations must pertain to things related to protection of employees and protection of the protection of the environment and clean air, et cetera. So there's a logic, the recommendation section must follow. The recommendation section must follow from these issues. Let's read Mariel's recommendation. So firstly, she has a conclusion. And um, you could avoid using the word concluded. You can say, 
evidence suggests or evidence suggested or it was revealed from the aforementioned analysis that Volkswagen's operational activities in both countries are more beneficial than detrimental. The activities have a negative impact and they lean towards exploitation, exploitation of policies. For prevention of these detrimental effects, it is recommended that the Volkswagen, you know, and Mariel, I just thought of something. You said that the, the Volkswagen's presence was more beneficial. You could summarize quickly in a line, you know, you could say it was more beneficial to, it was more beneficial to the US in, uh, in, in regard to job creation and FDI. And it was also beneficial to Brazil regarding, uh, I think it was FDI as well. So conclusion means to summarize. So you, you, it's a summary of your findings. So you had summarized that in the US, their benefits accrued to job creation. And in Brazil, their benefits accrued to R&D knowledge transfer. So you're just summarizing that in a sentence. This is a very important point. Does everybody understand how to write a conclusion? In your conclusion, you're summarizing your main, your main findings. Mariel says their main findings were exploitation of people and exploitation of the environment. And I'm encouraging here to summarize her positive findings in the US. Her positive findings in the US were job creation and FDI, and her positive findings in Brazil were knowledge transfer. If you understand how to write a conclusion, please indicate now. Please indicate now how to write a conclusion. It's a summary of your main finding. Please indicate in the chat now before I can move on, if you understand how to write a conclusion. Christina, yes. Kemba, yes. Akil, yes. Nisa, yes. Very good, very good. So that's conclusion recommendation. Mariel says here her recommendation for the prevention of these detrimental effects, it is recommended that Volkswagen implement self-regulatory policies in partnership with labor associations and unions. That's a lot of thing there. That's a lot of thing. So you have self-regulation, you have self-regulation, you have unions, and you have labor associations. The former recommendation suggests that stringent codes of conduct and environmental policies be maintained across the organization's global network, which would encourage the conservation of such the latter. So basically, you have two recommendations here, Marielle. Self-regulation, and this self-regulation is one, and the last is collaboration with unions. The latter would encourage employee rights and transparency and so on. So students. This was good, but this could be improved. Firstly, self-regulation here is an opportunity for Mariel to discuss, the, to discuss corporate social responsibility. You can define what corporate social responsibility is, say what it involves. It involves ethics. And that would be real good for Volkswagen because they were lying in their, they, they were, that was really fraudulent. So CSR involves ethics. It also involves um, environmentalism, and it involves protection for employees' um, rights and so on. So you could define what CSR is, say what it involves, and discuss countries and companies where similar recommendations have been implemented and how successful it was. So Mariel would be really good here, as you could see, a rival company, Toyota and Mercedes-Benz, implemented a CSR campaign X, Y, and Z. And this was the outcome. It was beneficial because they had fewer infractions with the law. They had fewer infractions of the environment. They had fewer accusations of exploitation of people. So that would be a recommendation that we are showing how it works. It has been implemented elsewhere, and this was the outcome of it. Does everybody understand how to write a recommendation? Yes, Mariel has two recommendations. And also with the point on unions, Mariel, you could have given an example where this has worked in another jurisdiction of the world. Let's say, for example, Fiat is um, 
if I'm saying that name correctly, it's a European auto manufacturer. And if you could show how Fiat has partnered with uh, labor associations and unions to uphold higher standards of um, wages and environmental practice, then that would be really good because you're not just making a recommendation. It's, it's like this class. If I am a client and you're a consultant and you're recommending to me that, you, that I implement a self-regulation practice and a union practice, don't you think you would need to tell me, well, Mr. Client, this is where it occurs in other jurisdictions of the world and this is the success in other jurisdictions of the world and therefore I should follow suit. Does everybody understand how to write a recommendation? You make the recommendation, but you need to say, give examples in other regions of the world or with other MNAs where this recommendation have, has been put into practice and what has been the outcome. How successful has it been in mitigating, mitigating the negative consequences? Does everyone understand how to write a recommendation? You should state your recommendation, but then give examples where these recommendations were implemented and how successful they were in mitigating the adverse consequences you discussed previously. If you understand how to write a recommendation, please indicate. Dimitri, I'm not hearing anything from you. You've been silent all day. Dimitri, do you understand how to write a recommendation? Julian, I haven't heard from you. Uh, Marie, Nikisha, tell me, do you understand how to write a recommendation based on the discussions? Please indicate in your chat before I move on. This is a very useful class, you know, students. Even if you, even if you did not send your material to me and you listened to this discussion, or even there's a, oh, I, have, I, I have been sending this to you. You see all of these? All of these are recommendations to make, your, to make your assignment more sophisticated. All of these, and I'm going to send them out in red. Well, not in red, I'll send them out later on via Jude. Okay. Sheldon, yes, I understand. Um, Dimitri, yes, I understand. Nikisha, I'm following, very good explanation. I'm happy, Mariel, you understand, excellent. Yes, okay, students, I, I in the last week, as I have been providing reviews, I noted some opportunities to introduce economic concepts. Race to the bottom. Many of you have been discussing uh, MNCs, exploiting the environment, exploiting, exploiting people. And all of this is because many of those poor countries practice race to the bottom and MNCs cause this. Because MNCs, MNCs know that they are more powerful than governments, they actually exacerbate these race to the bottom policies. This is an opportunity for you to discuss race to the bottom. Pollution havens, many of you have been discussing situations where MNCs have exploited poorer countries in China, in Brazil, etc. This is an opportunity to discuss pollution havens. Many of you have discussed MNCs contributing to sectors, the auto sector, the agriculture sector, etc. This means that MNCs have enabled countries to exploit their area of comparative advantage. Another theory for you to discuss. Many of you have discussed FDI and economic growth. The Harrod Duma model talks about a positive relationship. Another opportunity to discuss theory. Many of you have said that MNCs have increased production, which has led to an increase in the GDP. The percentage of exports in the GDP have increased. This is the COP index. All of these have enabled you, all of this could enable you to discuss more theory. Uh, Sheldon and I discussed the Gini coefficient on Lorentz curve. These show that sometimes when MNCs enter a country, yes, they will generate billions in the country, but that money isn't spread equally. The income does not reach the poor. And the Gini coefficient on Lorentz curve, they show how despite a country becoming richer, it is not shared equally. In Trinidad and Tobago, one could argue that all the money is in Goodwood Park, 
in Colview, in Belle and Palmis, and the rest people are desperately poor. We could argue, and there's data that suggests that the money is held by a few people and the rest are desperately poor. So MNCs, yes, they help countries, but how equally is this money distributed? Another opportunity to introduce theory, MNCs increase production and when they sell, when they sell commodities, the visible aspects of the, the visible balance of the balance of payments will increase. And uh, that is another opportunity for you to discuss a theory. Also, MNCs through their FDI increase the capital account of the, of the, the balance of payments, which makes the country more attractive as a destination for other MNCs. Many of you discuss that your MNCs contribute to communities, grants, and so on, scholarships. This could be an opportunity to introduce a discussion on CSR. Um, many, of you, many of you had said that pollution takes place more in the poorer countries than in the richer countries. And that's the Kuznets theory. He argues that countries that are more developed and more educated have less pollution than countries with lower levels of education and so on. So students, I'm not saying that you should discuss all 10. In fact, definitely do not discuss all 10, but try to discuss about three or four, I would say. Remember um, this, your assignment must be like a journal article. It is not a story in the Gazette. It must be like a journal article. Yes, we want examples of the country and all of that, but we want academic discussion. You see, all of this, is academic discussion. Um, I hope it is very clear what, what you should do and what I mean by academic discussion. So for Marielle, some of the academic discussions I would say is the balance of payments, uh, the FDI increased the capital account on the balance of payments, the human development index, the Harold Dumar model, the Koch index, and, the, and CSR. As I was reading Mario's report, these are, these are concepts that I could have woven and integrated into Mario's into Mariel's discussion. So um, I think it was a, I think it's a useful, the discussion was useful. And in the last week I have provided feedback to many people, even those who uh, missed the deadline, sent me material very late. I was correcting material from people who sent me as late as two days ago, but I, I, I tried my best to see everybody and to read everybody's work and to give you feedback. And I'm sure you've benefited from the feedback. I would really like to see everybody scoring high marks. If you score really high in IGE, it could pull up low marks in other areas where you may not have been you know, performing as, as, as good. So, try your best to score as high as a high mark as you can it would really pull up your overall average so q a does anybody have any question they would like to ask anything anything at all um maybe i should rephrase from from this review and we have to thank marielle uh, Mariel has been very generous. Some students are very are very cautious about sharing their material, and Mariel very graciously allowed the material to be exposed for the benefit of the benefit of the class. Uh, so we need to tell Mariel very we need to tell Mariel thanks. What she did was altruistic. Altruistic is when you contribute to society and to other people without any benefit to yourself. So Mariel has done something very altruistic and very benevolent here. Uh, I would like to ask how many students, we, we have a small group, 17, how many students um, are very, very clear on what you need to do to score 80? If you are clear on what you need to do to score 80, we don't even want a mark of 70, we want 80. How much people, if you are clear on what to do, please indicate in your chat, if the discussion has benefited you, and I always believe in giving value for people's money and time, 
you spend money, you spend time, and I always believe that in my classes, you must get value. If you feel you have gotten value and also the value does not end, I have a document. I have documented all of this. It will be circulated later on before the evening is done. I'll be sending it to Jude. You can look forward to that email. It is a set of checks and balances um, based on all my findings in the last week of correcting all these assignments. I have documented the common errors and you will receive that later on. If you feel that you've benefited, the session is helpful and you could score a higher mark, please indicate. So the chat is lighting up a lot. We have a lot from um, Nisa, very beneficial, certainly brought out clarity and more understanding. You're welcome from Kemba. I like your confidence, Kemba. You're going to score over 80 from Akil Tansu. Very helpful changes, a lot to make. I'm your... You're welcome, Akil from Nakisha. Thank you, really helpful. You're welcome from Mariel. Session was informative, beneficial. As always, Mariel, you're welcome. Bridget, very clear. You're welcome. Um, Kemba, thanks to, yes, yes, thank you. I know you're saying Kemba, thanks to Mariel, yes. Um, from Ramona, yes. Okay, so good, good. I think from, I think everybody has, indicated that they are that they could score um, a higher mark one more message from Ramona sir my company was Disney that has a 4.5 revenue generation can I talk about one year um, Ramona I'm not sure what's, what's the question what exact that has four to five revenue generation uh, Ramona, I'm not sure exactly. You want to restate it again? Was my MNC is Walt Disney? Can I talk about one area? You you want to explain? Ask the question again, so I can help. Right. Okay, students. Uh, so my let me see. Yes, my MNC is Walt Disney. They usually have several areas to generate revenue. Okay, um, Ramona, this sounds dangerous. Remember, the purpose of this assignment is not about the MNT. You know, we are not concerned at all about whether the MNT is profitable or generating revenue. You know, we are not concerned about that at all. The purpose of this assignment is not to analyze the impact on the MNC. It is to analyze the impact on the countries and the host countries. So we are not concerned where at all whether your MNC is making profits, losses, receiver, receivership, bankruptcy. We are not considered in their sources of revenue, none of that. We are concerned with their impacts on the countries. Okay, um, students, do we have any other questions before I log off? Uh, okay, Ramona, you're saying you understand. Okay, I'm happy that you understand. Before I log off, uh, any any uh, any questions? Anything? This is our last session. I wouldn't see you until the next semester. Next semester is contemporary issues in business. I would like to tell you also, last year when I taught contemporary issues in business, the module leader sent a personal email to me and she said that the performance of my students at CTS was 6% higher than the rest of the world. So all the other countries, all the other countries, Malaysia, Singapore, even the UK, the students at CTS in contemporary issues of the course I'm teaching next semester, last year when I taught it, the performance of the class was the highest in the world. And as you also know, last semester in GMEC, the performance of my class was highest in the world. It was so hard. It was so high, Tasha and the students that the other, the other, um, countries, the university gave all of them five marks extra. Imagine that. So all of the students in all the other countries around the world, all of them got a complimentary bonus five marks because their grades were so low compared to the students at CTS. The students at CTS, their grades were so high that it skewed the normal curve and everybody else had low marks. So the university gave all of them five marks. So every other student in every other country got a complimentary five marks because you basically made them look really inferior compared to your performance. 
that was documented and sent to me. Students, that is the kind of world-class performance that comes from us and we want to continue to replicate that practice. We had that practice last semester. We had those results from the semester before going St. Sheldon. So should expect to get a next five, so should expect them to get a nice. <laughs> okay, well, we really want, we really want everybody to do, to do well. And I have, uh, I really tried my best to, to give all that I can um, online, whether it's phone reviews, face-to-face -face reviews, whether it's email reviews. Um, I've really, really, really tried my best to help everyone. This is the end of the semester now, and I uh, thank you for being a good class. And um, I really try to ensure that you score the highest mark possible. So if you don't have any questions, I will log off. I want to ask again, do you have any other questions? Anybody, would you like to ask anything? From Tasha, thanks, so you're welcome, Tasha. I know you've done good. Christina, no. Okay, okay, students, thank you for today's class. And um, good luck, good luck. I will send out the material later on. From Ramona, thank you, you're welcome, Ramona. From Mariel, thank you, you're welcome. From Christina, thank you. Okay, you're welcome, everyone. So I'm going to log off now. Thank you, enjoy the rest of your day. And I will document my findings and send it later on. And I need to take care, everyone. Good afternoon.